Blessed Sunday, everyone. We welcome you all in our worship service this morning. And for those who worship with us for the first time, especially the Ninongs and Ninangs of the children that we are about to baptize later. So we welcome you all in our church, United Church of Christ in the Philippines Crossroad Congregational Church. We also welcome um, or thank you also for those joining us via online. Thank you for always welcoming us into your homes as we welcome our God in spirit and in truth. We would like to greet those who are celebrating their birthdays today and this uh, coming week. So happy, happy birthday. Namatay mga celebrators today present. Na So we greet you all. Happy, happy birthday. And let us sing our birthday greeting song to those uh, celebrating their birthdays. Once again has come your birthday. Once again the time is here. What a loving gift from Jesus. He has given you one more year. Happy time your birthday. Happy time this year. What a loving gift from Jesus. He has given you one more year. Also, those celebrating their wedding anniversary, happy anniversary. Please join me as we browse our chime bells for um, our uh, announcement and uh, to the life and ministries of our church. First of all, we would like to announce a congregation that today uh, starts our church election of new set of officers and there are actually two ways that we can cast our vote. Uh, via online, the link has already been posted in our Facebook page. So those who are joining with us and who wish to join or cast your vote online, so please uh, click the link. And also um, on site. So. As you enter the sanctuary, uh, the nomelec gives you the sample ballot. And so as we do this, let us pray and ask the Lord for guidance as we choose um, new leaders of our church that will serve for ecclesiastical year 2022 up to 2024. And also... Um, during the offertory, so as you have already received your, your ballot, so you can start voting and we will collect that ballot. So after or uh, during the offertory, uh, the Nomilek and our uh, CYF volunteers will um, bring the boxes, ballot boxes for, you to, uh, for them to collect all those um, ballots. And for those who still have time, who would like to spend your time, uh, see to it that before you uh, exit the sanctuary, we will also place ballot bags outside the sanctuary or even uh, the back of um, atong as you enter the sanctuary. So we will place another ballot box there for you to drop your uh, sample ballot. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. It's the Advent of Joy. So uh, we thank the family who will be lighting the candle of joy, and that is the Pulses family. We also would like to thank our worship leader, um, Mr. Paul De Los Santos, and also Gwen for uh, the load and also the postload later. Thank you for offering your talent for the Lord. Let us include in our prayers uh, all the upcoming activities of our church. 
Yesterday, we had our Go4 training at UCCP Umbay. We had also our street evangelism led by the mission and evangelism team of our church. And today, the team uh, proceeds to UCCP uh, Santa Cruz for the Go4 training. And on Wednesday, that is December 15, we have our evangelistic crusade at Bukana, Diri uh, Lang, Davao. Also, we solicit your prayers for the success of our Ukwo Assembly on December 20 to 22 at UCCP Rizal, Digos. And of course, our Christmas Cantata to be led by our Christian Youth Fellowship. All glory and honor we give to Jesus, the head of this church, and the perfecter of our faith. For the rest of the activities and updates as to the life and ministries of our church, so we invite you to please bring home with you or take time to browse our chime bells. Now let us prepare ourselves as we come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Today we light the candle of hope, thanking God for giving us Jesus Christ, our only hope for life. We also relight the candle of peace, thanking God for giving us Jesus, the Prince of Peace. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Today, we light the third Advent candle, the candle of joy. The radiance of this candle warms our hearts and fills us with joy. The Lord has done great things for us, let us rejoice as we declare that, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's all pray. Dear God, God care more important, and worry over many things. things. Help, Help us to hear your promise in this Advent season that in hearing we may receive the spirits of gift of joy and may our spirits be kept sound at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In those name we pray.
Let us worship our Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Our joy is in the Lord who blesses us. Shout for joy, for the Lord is near. Our praises ascend to God for the mighty things God has done. Let your praise dance and swirl in tribute to God. Surely God bless and saves us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Sunday as we celebrate the Advent of Joy. Lord, we come before you first and foremost with hearts of gratitude. You have seen us through another week and we stand at the threshold of a fresh week, full of new beginnings. Lord, help us to start this bright embarking with you. Steer in us a deep desire to come into further relationship with you. Remind us that it is not solely by going to Sunday service that we worship and come before you. Rather, it is through the daily communion with you, through relationship and prayer, as Jesus your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
please be seated. At this point in time, let us acknowledge the presence of our God in this worship service. In our celebration of the advent of joy, although God is the source of our joy, our sins often hinders our joy and the joy of others. And so with that, brothers and sisters and the Lord, let us sing our song of confession and asking the Lord to change our heart and asking him that our life may be like him. And also, let us confess that sins before God and for before one another. Change my heart. Prophet Sipaniah reminds us of this truth that God rejoices over us with gladness, that God renews us in love, and that God will exult over us with loud singing. Friends, I announce to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, another day and opportunity for us to be grateful to you for allowing us to come and gather in your sanctuary. This season of Advent gives us truly joy as we anticipate the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is also a great time to reflect on every good thing you have already done for us and the glorious things that are yet to be realized. We praise you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for you are Emmanuel, the spring of hope, the prince of peace, and the giver of joy. You indeed made promises you alone can keep. You give peace that can be found nowhere else. You have pledged a hope you alone can fulfill. Lord, as Advent progresses, fill us with the overflowing gratitude, humility, and joy. May this entire Advent season bring us back to your manger, back to your cross, back to your empty tomb, and moving forward with you into, a new, into your new creation story. Long expected, Jesus, you have come and you are coming again. You are the desire of every nation. You are the joy of every longing heart. By your sufficient merit, you have raised us and you will raise us yet. We pray, dear God, with gratitude and anticipation in your loving and triumphant name. Lord, we pray for those or for the needs of every family of this church Endure healing to those who are weak and sick. Comfort those who are in pain and in sorrow. Enlightenment to those who are confused and disturbed. Bestow reconciliation to those who have broken relationships. 
renew the strength of those who are tired and burned out. Increase the faith of those who are living in despair. Bring satisfaction for those who hunger for meaning and purpose. Stillness, O oh Lord, for those who are overpowered by anger and resentment. Lord, speak to every heart of your children. Minister to every needs of your people, O oh Lord. Lord and our God, the giver of inexplicable joy, bless all your people and the church of Christ that we may celebrate aright the incarnation of your love in the person of Jesus Christ. May the whole world recognize the healing and saving ministry of Christ through us as we reach out to a world filled with dark shadows. Prepare our hearts for your coming. Illumine our waiting and watching, our praying, thinking, and our acting with the light of the gospel so that we may produce the fruit of patience, love, and joy. We need the Holy Spirit, the spirit of patience in our lives, the spiritual source of our joyful hope. Lord, prepare us even as we attend to your word through your servant. Give him the double portion of your anointing. Give us an open mind and open heart to receive your words. In Christ Jesus, we offer all these prayers. Amen. May I request all those who are able to please stand as I lead the reading. And if you have your Bible with you, you can join me reading from Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed and to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release them, release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Then people will call them ox of righteousness, the planting of the Lord in order to display his splendor. Here is the reading of the Word of God for the people of God. i 
all so merrily, decorate the Christmas tree, light it up for all to see, shine the light of Christmas, and the stockings in a row, light the fire all aglow, case beneath the mistletoe, shine the light of Christmas, Merry, Merry Christmas, one and all. Now's the time when snow is falling, friends are calling, apple cider steaming hot, ginger bread that grandma brought, company that needs a lot, shine the light of Christmas. Ring along the jingle bells, ring along the sights and sounds, things you all remember well, shine the light of Christmas. Crack the whip and off we go, take a step right in the snow, snuggle up in your best bow, shine the light of Christmas, Merry, Merry Christmas time again. We will treasure every minute at the spinning, sing the carols joyfully, stack the presents by the tree, share the love with family, shine the light of Christmas, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King, let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Voice of angels sing in exaltation, O sing on the bright coast of heaven. Shine the light of Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Hello. You know, two years ago, during this season, we already hear children singing. Dito sa atong mga gates, I'm sure you miss those days. When kids are singing, no, magkanta na sila ito na, berting, berting, berting. Abtike ni mga bata ba? And even if we do not understand, we just enjoy listening. Especially when they already sing that last song. Thank you. No? Thank you sa kaning maghihatagon, yatagbalay, bisa guwa mo hatag. Pasalamatan kaya po nila. And they're just happy. 
Last week, there's a memo circulated announcing that uh, caroling, birthday uh, parties are prohibited even until today. Today. But worship gathered on a Sunday is not prohibited. So that gives us a reason to be here on today. At different times and in different places, the Lord finds it necessary to give believers certain instructions and reminders, directives, because from the point of view of the Lord, it is necessary for us to be reminded because oftentimes we forget. Tomo, we forget. There was one instance when I was so busy searching for something and the little boy noticed, Tai, what are you looking for? I said, since you're asking, help me look for my glasses. What are you looking? My glasses. Can't you feel it? What? I'm looking for my glasses. Can't you feel it? It's in your head. Diba common yung mga experience, no? Common. And it doesn't matter whether you're already of age or maybe the same sa ako ng edad. In fact, earlier today, while worship is going on, we were talking here. Kinsa pa gani tong ngalan sa atong nag We were talking, yeah, it's, yeah, Gwen. Si Gwen to. Ingon da yun po dang usa ka pastor. You know, my difficulty I is uh, remembering names. Ayan po ko, well, good for you. You only have problems with names. There are times we forget. Beyond just remembering names, we remember probably the faces. One year and more than eight months, we remember faces. Uy, si Kuan ni! Ah... Can you share the feeling of struggling and remembering some important memories? So, from God's point of view, it is necessary, especially for believers, to be reminded. One example is that the Christians in Thessalonians, Paul wrote and reminded them, to always pray because we need to be reminded to pray often. Sometimes we forget actually to connect with God in prayer. Another example is expressed in our passage. The Lord re-emphasizes this through the letter of Paul to the Christians in Philippi. When Paul wrote, Rejoice in the Lord! Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentle or gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. God wanted that believers will always be reminded so they keep themselves busy of doing the business of God. Amidst COVID, daghan ang ilog sa atong schedule. And we tend to forget the important agenda of God in our life. It is interesting to note that Paul, in, in his letter to the Christians in Philippi, he was in Rome while in prison for the second time. And in that context, Paul does not expect to return to his Believing community and friends alive. He was in fact in expecting that he will receive death penalty. This time that he was in prison for the second time. And in that context, still Paul was able to write to the believers of his time, to those who followed Jesus, 
to those who were converted into faith. And Paul is saying, rejoice. Can you imagine someone imprisoned and waiting for his death penalty and is still encouraging you to rejoice? Again, rejoice. In the context of COVID, can we also say rejoice? Taka lang ka, Pastor Oy. Kalisod baya in reality, especially when you are the one infected and affected. If you are the one isolated and quarantined, rejoicing somehow is a challenge. Let us pray. Father in heaven, speak to us, O Lord, that amidst pandemic, we have difficulty finding joy. Our joy somehow is affected by the circumstances, the experiences. Our joy is challenged, Lord, by a lot of things. And so today, allow us as we celebrate the third Advent Sunday to reflect from your word, be convicted by the Spirit with the intention to obey your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Note that the words in Isaiah 65, the one I was reading earlier, is also found in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 22. After the passage was read by Jesus in a synagogue sitting, setting, this is what you will see, verse 20 and 21. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. While the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him, he began to say this to them. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled as you've heard it read aloud. 800 years ago, God already asked prophet Isaiah to prophesy about the coming Messiah. And people were waiting for that day to be fulfilled. 800 years, can you still afford to wait patiently and rejoice? Well, there were a lot already in those days that they were prostrated. They grab another opportunity where they can find hope, help, and anything. Because somehow people were losing hope. They were losing their joy. They were so frustrated. 800 years later, Jesus was reading that particular passage and added this particular statement. On this day, when this is read aloud before you, this is being fulfilled. The ganang reaction sa mga tao, especially religious leaders, but those who are conscious, sensitive of the prophecy, of course, they will probably rejoicing. So the whole passage is actually quoted, as I've said, by Jesus in Isaiah 61. And it started with this statement, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. And Jesus' baptism, if you notice, and remember the event, when Jesus went through baptism, a voice from heaven declared, this is my beloved son of whom I am pleased. And the spirit descended like a dove, declaring before all those who were there that indeed this particular being is chosen, the Messiah, the one who is sent and is fulfilling the prophecy of God. Isaiah continued, because the Lord has anointed me, again, 
consider the baptism of Jesus. He was anointed, declared by a voice from heaven, and the Spirit of the Lord descended directly to him. Kanindot ba nga makawitness untana ni Ana? But it, all, it already happened more than 2,000 years. So Jesus had a very particular mission and purpose in his life. According to scripture, to preach good news to the oppressed. And this is the gospel. To preach the good news to the oppressed, the abused, those who were marginalized in their society. Isaiah describes this gospel as good news, the good news of God, not any good news from any political organization. It is a good news coming from God. He has sent me, Jesus read that particular statement, He has sent me to bend or bind up the brokenhearted. Claro kaayo ang iyang message. And this is not just a good news for that particular community. It is a proclamation of healing for, for the brokenhearted, for those who repent with broken hearts, sorrow over sins, forgiveness heals and binds them up. There is more in the proclamation and purpose of Jesus Christ when He come to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. The penitent sinner is no longer held captive by sin. He no longer sits in the darkness of evil. In summary, both passages from Isaiah and Luke says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and God's favor brings freedom to all. Isn't it a good news? If you are given a promise of freedom 800 years before He came, siguro ka po yung tagpaabot but on that day that it was being fulfilled, grabe ang kalipay sa mga tao. On that day when Jesus said, this is being fulfilled upon the hearing of the reading of the Word of God. So, by Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, we are all given a gift, a gift of freedom. In fact, the sins of the entire world have been paid for. And so you are given freedom from sin. Na may daghang dilik mo tuo, ani? Na mo ingon, yes, I agree. Dilik man mo ingon, I believe. Yes, I agree that I am given freedom. Pero pastor, to akong sin sa una forgiven yes the scripture says na ang akong sin karon is it also included yes the scripture says na ang akong sin sa so malabot nagplano day ka <laughs> di ba di plano ka but the scripture clearly says even your future sin is included because past present and future sin of human being in Jesus Christ have been cleared, cleansed, and forgiven. That's why that particular truth gives us reason to rejoice. So, Panahoni Christ, when He was telling His crowd, the response of the crowd was, Are we under the slavery if we are children of Abraham? In other words, they were rejecting the truth and they were claiming 
that they are children of freedom by virtue of being a children of Abraham. Murabag daghan sa ato pod karon. People claim already that because they are part of the list of a particular denomination and therefore it is assumed that I am even without declaring and prophesying and confessing that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Remember that they replied to Jesus saying, they were never slaves because they were Abraham's children. The world does the same thing to us. The world offers freedom. In fact, in non pata, you struggle for it. You fight for it. And we are taught, we're deceived somehow. We believe that we need to fight for it. But it's already a gift in Jesus. All you need to do, believe and accept that you have been given the gift of freedom. It seems as if enough money is the answer to everything. COVID, asul bad anak pastor, kwarta, fildo, trabaho. It seems as if only the experts can tell us the right answer, especially during pandemic. We have forgotten that God in His Holy Spirit reveals certain truth that even the experts do not know. Only God enlightens us with a truth that gives us freedom from any captivity. I'd like to read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. They promised them freedom while they, were, they themselves are slaves of wickedness. For a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. From time to time, and maybe just all too often, we are actually slaves to whatever might overcome us for the moment, or maybe has overcome us for a year, and you don't notice for your life you have been overcome already. On our own, we are lost and condemned creatures. God's law clearly reminds us of that particular simple truth. We cannot escape the condemnation of the law of God. Or balihon siguro na ko, mangunta na ko, kinsaba sa ato, ang makahimo sa atong kaugalingong effort. To release us from the captivity of sin. From the captivity of the claims of the truth of the world. You see, our Heavenly Father has provided for us and also for the entire world the best solution in life and this best gift that he has afforded every person is freedom from sin. This freedom is found in the gift of the baby born at Bethlehem and which we celebrate this season. This freedom is found only in the man crucified on the cross and this freedom is seen at the empty tomb. Romans chapter 6 verse 14 says, For sin shall not be your master. Sin shall not be the one that overcomes you because you are not under the law, but you are under God's grace. So you and I and believers everywhere, those who are attending online, rejoice in the Lord's gift of freedom. A beautiful gift that when we light that third candle, we do not just celebrate joy 
out of a season nga ato na ning rutinary nga celebration every year when we light that third candle reminds us that the gift god ever afforded humanity is the gift of freedom you don't have to fight for it you only have to believe and accept it as a gift from god believers live a life that is free from cares worries and stress of this earthly way of living at least we ought to be if not then paul reminds us he goes rejoice and again i say rejoice and again i say rejoice he will keep on reminding and reminding rejoice this freedom we enjoy is freedom from the burden of sin this freedom we enjoy today is a freedom from the power of satan freedom from any ideological manipulation remember that the message of christ is addressed to those who are oppressed in the world in the context of our church being a denominational umbrella uccp every member of the body of christ shall be celebrating the same freedom that jesus proclaimed during his days ingon siya this is being fulfilled today and that took place 2000 years ago freedom even from repressive deceptive tyrant systems in the organization or any organization this freedom we enjoy is finally also the freedom from defeat of death si paul ingon siya sa mga kristiyano sa galatian chapter 5 verse 1 it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Can you read mo anang a verse? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. What a very strong statement Paul gave to the Christians in Galatia. So God has promised us freedom. God has provided us ultimate freedom through His Son, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. And therefore, this gives us reason today to say, Be glad then in the promises of Christ that is being fulfilled. And now we are enjoying it. Second, Agui second pa di ay ta. Believers living in freedom will also experience the gladness. The gladness of God in their day-to-day living. Do you believe in that? Amidst pandemic, you won't notice that if you are enjoying the gift of freedom, tingala sila, mali pa yun mag-Yaponis siya. Christ proclaims in the scripture that he read and he said this is being proclaimed this is being fulfilled in si Christ the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God is fulfilled today note that the judgment mentioned in this particular passage is with favor had look by attack judgment in the world when you are judged, you are condemned. In the world when you are labeled, you are isolated, suppressed, and your freedom is lost. You are not given any time a participation to any organization when you are labeled. But in Christ, He said, judgment will come with favor. And there is no terror here for the believer. 
Because if you read again the scripture, judgment is only for those who reject the reign of Christ. Read Luke, I think 19 verse 27 when Jesus said, For all those who reject my lordship, gather them before me. This is the end times. Gather them before me and slaughter them before me. It is dreadful for those who reject. It is fearful for those who do not acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ. But for you who have accepted him, for us who have become part of the body of Christ, it is something that we need to celebrate because it is the day of the Lord. So Jesus comes to comfort all who mourn, provide for those who grieve in Zion, and for those who are still mourning today, he is saying, I am here to heal and comfort you. Who are the ones mourning and grieving in God's church? Maybe because we somehow tend to focus on something else. And that is why we are broken hearted. About 400 employees receive termination letter. Aganahan ka? Broken hearted yoga. But if you somehow look at life from the different perspective that will not threaten you, you respond to it according to the freedom that God has gifted you. And therefore, you will treat it differently. So these are the ones sorrowful over sin. These are the ones who are freed from sin's burden. They are the ones healed and comforted when Jesus came to their rescue. Isaiah describes the joy that comes from the comfort of forgiveness from the forgiving Savior. Dili siya gikan bisag asa, gikan siya sa forgiving Savior. Remember, Jesus said, I have come to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Ginahan ko sa Bisaya nga translation. Kaniingon siya, Nianhi ako aron hatagan ta mog corona dili covid-19. Corona sa pag kalipay sa pagdaig dili sa abo. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. Again, no more mourning, only rejoicing and gladness in the presence of Christ. The Lord does not, the Lord does all of this for His people. Somehow we, we tend to struggle for it because we are taught by the world, you need to fight for your right. Sukol, ayaw pa daog-daog. Diba, mamay ato madunggan? But if you read and review the scripture, it is a gift and have been fulfilled. And therefore, God the Lord, God in Jesus Christ, does all of this for His people. God's people become people of strength. In fact, in verse 3, the description is this, Oaks of righteousness. Sabi saya, mahimo silang mga tugas ng gitanom sa ginoo. Wa na may siguro mga batanon makailag tugas. Wa po siguro yung nakailaog oak of righteousness. But you will be a people standing strong and firm amidst all the trials and even pandemic can never, diba, can never shatter your dreams because it is God who has gifted us with this joy. Psalm 126, 5 and 6 says, those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves of with him. 
In Cebuano translation, it says, Ang pagpugas inubanan sa mga luha, muani nga malipayon. Tawag, ito karanata. Sila nga naghilak samtang naglakaw dala ang binhi nga igpupugas. Mag-awit nga malipayon sa kaulahian dala ang ilang mga abot. Can you imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, that Paul, in his time, is saying, Rejoice! Even in the context that he was waiting for his final verdict of death, because he somehow knew that his joy is not affected by any circumstances. And therefore, today, we can all say and declare, be glad in the promises of God. Celebrate your freedom from sin. Stand firm in Christ because eventually you and I will be facing not the judgment but a welcome from our Father saying, come and join. It is worth, therefore, rejoicing. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, that um, today starts the uh, official choosing and electing our new set of officers, and they will take their office after the installation, and that is on second Sunday of January. So, based from the constitution and bylaws of our church, all the regular members and also the associate members shall have the right to vote and be voted upon. So we have, you have with you the official ballot. So we request you to exercise your, your right to vote. And for those who have no ball pens or pens, so please ask the nomilek to uh, give you. And so as we choose, let us offer our prayer because as stated in the official ballot, pray then. Then check, shade the oval before the candidate's name and offer your filled out ballots to God. And uh, important um, reminders, no erasure and alterations because that would invalid, uh, invalid, invalidate your, your votes. So let us offer our prayer as we start the election process of choosing new leaders of this church O oh lord it is but very important to acknowledge you as the great example of true and genuine leadership and of servanthood and we ask for your guidance and for discernment so that we may choose leaders who hears your word who will live your love and keep in the ways of your truth as they um, follow in the steps of Jesus and also his disciples. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is good. In his second letter, in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, Paul again reminded us, saying, Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make your own mind what you will give. 
This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Brothers and sisters, cheerfully, gladly, in this Sunday, in this Advent Sunday of joy, let us joyfully offer our tithes, our pledges, and other offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Father, as we lay before you these offerings, we give you all that we are and everything that you have entrusted to us. Come, bless this gift, these gifts for the sake of your kingdom and glory. Amen. Please be seated.
brothers and sisters in the Lord, today we will perform very important sacrament of our church, and that is the sacrament of the Holy Baptism. And let us all be reminded once again of the word of Jesus Christ, his commission to his disciples when he says, Go forth to all and make all the nations my disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. And as he says that, I am with you always to the end of time. Parents, in your desire to bring your child because you would like to receive the love and because this baptism is, we believe that it is the entrance of these children into uh, becoming a member of this body of Christ. Let us also rem uh, remember that Jesus Christ, together with his disciples, um, he says, let the children come to me and do not hinder them because for to such belongs the reign of Christ. And so we believe that your children, your child, is, um, belongs to the kingdom of Christ. Now, um, for you parents, uh, do you confess your belief and in your faith that your son truly is um, the children or the child of God? And you also profess your faith that you believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ over your life. In bringing your child, you believe that um, they will receive the love of Jesus Christ, his love and his care. And because as we remember what Jesus Christ did, that after telling the disciples what he did was he um, took the children and he blessed them. And so since the children or your child still cannot confess and profess their faith, it is your faith, therefore, that will declare this congregation that you truly believe in the Lordship and even believe in the importance of the Bible as the source of your inspiration, especially in bringing and nurturing and rearing your children. To the Ninongs and Ninangs who are being chosen by this family to be the second parents of these children, do you also um, promise that with your influence you will help this family in uh, nurturing the child and uh, bringing this child into um, maturity of their faith in Christ Jesus. And to the congregation here present today to witness the entrance of these children into becoming a member of this church, do you also believe and also affirm that you will help this family in your task and even your love and care in bringing these children into the love and care of this family of Jesus Christ. As you do this, your response will be by standing to confirm and affirm your um, acceptance of these children. Okay. Let us offer our prayer of dedication. Gracious and loving Father, we, this congregation, the body of Christ, O Lord, pray and offer these children before your throne of grace and love, recognizing you being the author of life and the giver of love and care, most especially to these children and even to the parents who really desire to bring their children into your love and care. Bless them, O Lord, in their desire to be brought these children or their child into the fold of the believers, family and believers of Jesus Christ. To you, we give honor and praise, being the head and perfecter 
of our faith. Amen and amen. Sai Deborah Alentahe, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and grant you peace now and always. Amen. Jolo Roman A. Saldivar, I baptize you in the name of the Father. Son and Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and grant you peace now and always. Amen. Amen. Friends in the Lord, now we commend to your love and care Jolo Roman Saldivar and Sai Deborah Alentahi. You face the congregation. As now we accept as the new member of this body of Christ. Let us welcome them as we offer our clap, offering of praise and thanksgiving to God. Saldivar, Mr. and Mrs. Saldivar and Alentahe. Thank you, dear God, that you have allowed us, O oh Lord, to witness one important milestone in the life of this family as we now officially welcome them into the fold of your um, congregation, the United Church of Christ in the Philippines Crossroad Congregational Church. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you, because you are our Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Let's remain standing for our concluding portion of the worship. Be glad in the Lord's promises. Celebrate freedom and enjoy gladness. May our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father always will keep us occupied by the gladness of our heart. So we continue to celebrate the joy of the Lord as promised and as being fulfilled. As we sing our closing hymn, Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Let us consider rejoicing at all time. The altar is open for those who would like to come and offer their personal prayers. Let us just observe social distancing as we come for our prayers.
May I invite all to just bow our heads and gladly offer our individual prayers in silence. Father, thank you for the gift of freedom which gives us reason to keep on rejoicing because we know that whatever circumstances may challenge our existence, the gift of life will never be affected because it comes from you in Jesus Christ. And therefore, Lord, we keep on singing, rejoice, we rejoice. Our prayer is that you keep our hearts pure so we can rejoice. And we continue to shout and sing, rejoice, Alleluia, because you are our God who gifted us with a beautiful gift of freedom. And we celebrate it. Father, today we offer into your throne the individual prayers of those who have come with bended knees and even those who are standing in their respective pews and those who are joining us online, O oh Father. Hear every person's prayer as the church lift all of them for your attention, and for your care. We just trust how you respond to it. In advance, we are already thankful because you're listening. You hear us when we talk to you. Father, teach us continually that even amidst the ongoing pandemic, we are able to learn more about Christ and live more to be like Christ. Thus, we entrust to you our lives, believing that you and the Holy Spirit empowers us, strengthens us, and guides us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Amen.